The Book of the Prophet Jonah. Jonah was the son of Amittai. His name means dove, which represents peace. Amittai means my truth. Now, there's no reference in the book of Jonah to any event that would help us know what particular time in history the story of Jonah took place. But according to 2 Kings 14.25, the prophet Jonah lived during the reign of Jeroboam II of the northern kingdom of Israel. During the reign of Jeroboam II, there was a lot of political instability. This time period saw the assassinations of rulers and unpredictable foreign policy in Israel. During this time, Israel's religion was corrupted through Baal worship and idolatry. They looked to Baal as the provider of agricultural productivity and flocks. They would partake in drunkenness, sexual orgies, and child sacrifice in order to benefit from Baal's procreative power. Even Israel's priests were promoting idolatry in the land. Jonah's ministry was before the rise of Assyria, later in the 8th century under the powerful Tiglath-Pileser III. However, the book was written sometime between the 8th century and the 3rd century BC, well after the life of Jonah. The book of Jonah assumes Nineveh was a great and wicked city. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria and was destroyed by the Babylonians in 612 BC. According to the book, Jonah was sent to Nineveh by God. Now, Israel was under threat from Assyria and its capital of Nineveh. Some theorize that Jonah's flight is in response to the the specter of the potential destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel at the hands of Nineveh. Now, the Hebrews were God's chosen people, and it was uncharacteristic of them to follow God's command to bring in the other nations to himself. In chapter 1 of the book, God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach against the city because of its wickedness, but Jonah flees and goes in the opposite direction from Nineveh. He goes down to Joppa and boards a ship bound for Tarshish, modern-day Spain, the edge of the known western world. And we read that he goes down below deck to sleep, but God intervenes and sends a storm. The crew casts lots to see who's to blame, and the lot fell to Jonah. The pagan sailors refuse Jonah's request to throw him to the sea, and instead try to row to land, but fail. Only when they submit to the will of God and throw Jonah overboard is the storm calm. And the text says that the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah as he sank down to the depths. In chapter 2, Jonah describes the experience as being swallowed up by Sheol, or death itself. But we learn that God is present even in Sheol. Jonah's prayer to God is very similar to Psalm 139. In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them, but I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the text says that after three days, God causes the fish to vomit Jonah up onto dry ground, which is significant if the fish is a symbol of death itself. Jesus refers back to this passage in the New Testament when the people demanded a sign from him. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. In chapter 3, God once again calls Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah goes this time and delivers almost a joke of a sermon to them with no real instruction. He just tells them that God will destroy them in 40 days. But they believed him, and from the lowly to the high, all were repentant. The text says that even the cows repented and wore sackcloth and ashes. In chapter 4, Jonah sits outside Nineveh waiting for God to destroy the city, but nothing happens. Jonah wants some shade, so God causes a large vine to grow up over him. In the morning, God destroys the vine through a worm. Jonah freaks out and starts whining and complaining and begging God to kill him. God asks him if he has any right to be angry, and Jonah says he does. He's like, I knew you would do this. I knew that you would be merciful and forgive them. That's why I didn't want to go. I wanted them to die. Kill me now. I'm better off dead than alive. And the book ends with God's final word to Jonah. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? And that's how the book ends.